altitude 177 nautical miles. Okay, Houston, uh, Mall 11, that's that it, gave us a magnificent ride. Uh, Roger, 11, we'll pass that on, and it certainly looks like you're well on your way now. You're now seeing the NASA Manned Spacecraft Center as it looked back in the mid-1960s. It is a massive complex of 100 buildings covering 1,600 acres in the Clear Lake area of Houston, Texas. Established in November 1961, its construction started in 1962. It was renamed the Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center in 1973. The center is the home of the NASA Astronaut Corps, the specialized unit that selects, trains, and provides astronauts as crew members for U.S. and international space missions. In historical spaceflight communications and in movies, this center is also known as Mission Control, or simply as Houston. It is one of NASA's 10 major field centers. These facilities included emergency power generators and air conditioning equipment to ensure continued operation of the Mission Control Center, regardless of any external power failure. In 1961, NASA transferred Project Mercury and its personnel from the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland to the new Mission Control Facility in Houston. Goddard remained involved in the manned space flight program, providing vital computer support, worldwide radar tracking, and other key projects. In 1963, NASA awarded Philco Ford Corporation the prime contract to design and implement the Mission Control Center in Houston. Philco had been highly involved in U.S. space projects since the 1950s. This gave rise to the Real-Time Computer Complex, or RTCC, which provided vital, real-time central computational facilities for major aspects of the Gemini Apollo missions. When it began operation around 1965, it utilized five IBM 7094-2 mainframes and two Univac 490 computers. A massive upgrade was authorized in 1966, with 18 companies competing for the contract. Eventual contract award resulted in the installation of five IBM 360 75J computers and multiple Univac Model 494 machines and supporting equipment. There are five IBM 360 75 computers in the RTCC. During an Apollo mission, Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package, an automated lunar science laboratory, and for simulations or other future missions-related activities. They can be called into service as replacements should one of the mission support computers fail. The computer complex is supervised by men in the RTCC control room. The two mission computers are both fed the same mission data, but only one is connected to the main display system. The other is a dynamic standby, which can take over immediately should the main computer fail. This switchover has been designed so that a man makes the decision to switch. However, the computer monitors itself to detect internal central processing unit failures or peripheral equipment malfunctions and notifies the operator. While the output of the RTCC is used in several areas, it is primarily sent to the display control system. This area of the Mission Control Center consists of a number of facets. The RTCC was the largest computer center of its kind at the time. To ensure the success of NASA missions, specialized training is conducted in highly complex simulators. Astronauts in the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo program spent one-third or more of their training time in simulators. Early Gemini simulators were a combination of analog and digital components. This is the control panel of an Apollo simulator, controlled by highly skilled NASA personnel. During the Apollo program, use of digital computers to control simulators was essential. The Apollo Guidance Computer on board the actual spacecraft was emulated using specialized software running on DDP-224 computers.
The Apollo mission simulator was 65 feet wide, 30 feet high, and over 100 feet long. It weighed 40 tons and required four DDP-224 computers for simulation functions. By the time a manned space mission is launched, flight crews and ground support crews have flown the mission hundreds of times, thanks to the computerized simulators. For astronaut training programs, systems planning engineers design both the hardware and the software to make the simulators very realistic. In the Apollo Command Module Simulator, most spacecraft systems are represented. Digital computers perform real-time computations that put trainees into convincing spaceflight situations. The sense of reality is heightened by simulated spacecraft characteristics, flight dynamics, and visual and sound effects from control panel lights to jet and rocket noises. T-minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Mark Bravo. Apollo 11, Houston, you're good at one minute. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go for TLI, over. Apollo 11, thank you. Roger out. The Lunar Module Simulator is also an all-digital simulator with three computers using coordinates based on math models to simulate the spacecraft and the lunar landing phase of a mission. As in the command module trainer, simulation of the primary guidance, navigation, and control system is a most significant part of the training procedures. In the lunar module itself, the controlling element in the system is an onboard digital guidance, navigation, and control computer. Okay, Houston, uh, Apollo 11, that's that and gave us a magnificent ride. Uh, Roger, 11, we'll pass that on, and it certainly looks like you're well on your way now. The Link Group of General Precision Systems. Apollo Mission and the Lunar Mission Simulators. The Apollo Mission Simulator was built by the Link Group of General Precision Systems, incorporated under contracts with North American Rockwell and NASA. The Lunar Mission Simulator was built under contracts with Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation and NASA. Simulators were installed at both the Houston, Texas facility and at the Kennedy Space Center facility in Florida. Multiple DDP computers were used at each flight simulation installation. The Model 224 was a faster and more powerful version of the Model DDP-24. Both used similar technology and components. Modular board design helped facilitate service and upgrades. The Computer Control Company was a pioneering microcomputer company formed by Dr. Louis Fain, Robert Massert, Bill Horton, and others who had worked on RADAC. Raytheon Digital Automatic Computer for the Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics in the late 1940s and early 1950s. Founded on October 30, 1952, it moved from Wellesley to Framingham in 1959. It also established a West Coast office in Los Angeles, California. 
Computer Control Company developed a wide variety of custom-engineered, special-purpose digital equipment for scientific and military applications, including top-secret projects. It became widely known for its highly successful DDP computers, based on the innovative DDP-116 computer designed by Gardner Hendry around 1964. In 1966, the company was acquired by Honeywell and became the Computer Control Division of Honeywell, Incorporated. That same year, Honeywell won a $4.2 million contract to supply DDP-224 computers to NASA. They became key components in NASA's computerized flight simulation programs. In 1970, Honeywell acquired General Electric's computer division and formed Honeywell Information Systems. It stopped producing the DDP product line around that time. Existing DDP system installations continued in use for many years. In total, more than 60 DDP-224 computers were shipped worldwide, many to NASA and other government facilities.